Hey everyone, are you looking for a steady income during the upcoming 2023 global recession? If that's the case, I've got three of the best US dividend stocks with a strong dividend record, solid financials and a healthy risk reward ratio. So strap yourselves in, smash that like button and let's dive in. In my last video, I talked about the global economic outlook for 2023 and, let's be honest, the expectations are rough. However, even in the worst markets, there is still money to be made if you know where to look. Without further ado, let's look into the first stock and that is the Sonoco Products Company that trades under the ticker SUN. Sonoco is a packaging company that operates through two segments, consumer packaging and industrial paper packaging, which include everything from paper containers, thermoformed plastic trays and containers, to fiber-based tubes, recycled paper board, recovered paper and so on. It's nothing sexy, but it is a steady and profitable industry. Sonoco's earnings have risen massively in 2022 and are expected to stay up for the next couple of years. Currently, Sonoco's price-to-earnings ratio is 10, while its forward price-to-earnings ratio is 9.6. Its price-to-earnings growth ratio is 0.6, and if you are familiar with Peter Lynch, you will know that a PEG ratio of under 1 means that you are likely to get yourself a bargain. The good thing about Sonoco is that the company is very efficient and has a return on equity of 23%, which is really good to see, and way above the sector median of 12.7%. However, Sonoco's margins are not ideal. The gross margin is 20.3%, which is below the sector median of 30.8%, and its net margin is 6.2%, which is also below the sector median of 8.9%. Lower margins make companies like Sonoco more vulnerable during inflation. The good thing here is that inflation has already started subsiding, so that shouldn't be an issue, at least for the next year, but is something worth keeping an eye on. So is Sonoco healthy? Well, sort of. They have a lot of long-term debt which stands at 2.6 billion dollars, but there is a silver lining to it. Most of the debt worth 1.2 billion US dollars was issued just before the Federal Reserve started hiking up interest rates. And so the nominal interest rates there are relatively low, between 1.8% and 2.85%. Most importantly, the debt was taken to finance an acquisition of Bow Metal Pack Holding, which should add nicely to Sonoco's revenue and earnings. If we look at the total interest expense for Sonoco, their interest expenses for 2021 were about 68.2 million. With the new debt, another 28.2 million US dollars will be added, which will make their total interest expense for 2023 and onwards somewhere around 96.4 million. Given that Sonoco's trailing 12-month earnings before tax and income are $578.4 million and are also expected to stay roughly the same in the coming year, their interest payments are well covered, so I would not worry about that personally. Sonoco does have low cash on hand of about $182 million, but the company also has receivables and inventory worth about $2 billion that easily cover the current liabilities of $1.75 billion. Alright, so we have looked at the business and it seems to be doing good. What about the dividend though? Here's the best part. Sonoco has been consistently paying dividends for the last 40 years and, even better, they have increased their dividend every single year. With an average dividend growth rate of 4.9% over the last 10 years, Sonoco is a great dividend growth stock to own. Currently, the dividend yield is 3.2%, so it's not the best, but it is sustainable. The payout ratio is only 30.8%, which leaves plenty of cash for the company to grow its business. Basically, with Sonoco you can get both capital and dividend appreciation, which is really the best of both worlds. Finally, do we have a margin of safety with Sonoco? Personally, I think so. Sonoco's current PE is the lowest they've had in the last 10 years, with the exception of 2021 when they actually had negative earnings, although that was due to a pension plan settlement and was a one-off expense. Sonoco's current price is at its pre-COVID level of $61.2, with an average analyst price target of $67.8, so we are looking at a potential 10% upside here. The lowest analyst price target is actually $61, so the expected worst case scenario is Sonoco's price just stays the same. Overall, Sonoco is a stable company with an efficient business, strong dividend and is likely to perform well, even during a year of global economic struggles. 
The second pick is Altria Group. If you're a dividend investor, you will have heard about Altria. It is one of the most popular dividend stocks in the US, the reason being its massive, massive yield. But I will talk about that in a bit. First of all, what do Altria do? Well, they're one of the biggest tobacco companies in the US, founded 200 years ago in 1822. Similar to Coke and Pepsi, Altria has one massive rival in the US, and that is Philip Morris International, which is actually my third stock pick. Funnily enough, Philip Morris actually spun off from Altria in 2008. You can't really talk about one without talking about the other. Both companies are mainly operating in the tobacco and oral tobacco products sector. Both companies are currently working on tobacco-free products for the future. Altria has Juul and Philip Morris International has Icos and Heats. So we can see both companies are trying to innovate and expand their product portfolio as people slowly move away from smoking. Now, let's look at some numbers around their operations. Over the last 10 years, Altria's gross profit margin has been steadily increasing from a low of 53% in Q1 of 2014 to 67.7% in Q3 of 2022. While Philip Morris's gross margin has fluctuated between 63 and 68%, although currently it sits at 66%, just below Altria's. Altria's revenue has steadily increased from $17.5 billion in Q1 2013 to $20.7 billion in Q3 of 2022, although it has dipped a bit over the last year and a half. On the other hand, Philip Morris's revenue has fluctuated between $31.5 billion in Q1 2013 to $26 billion in Q2 of 2016, then back up to $31.7 billion in the latest quarter of 2022. In terms of profitability, Altria's latest net margin was 22.7%, whereas Philip Morris's was 27.6%. Their return on assets is very high compared to the sector median of 3.62%. Altria has an ROA of 13.8% and Philip Morris International has an ROA of 21.5%. Overall, both companies are doing well, but Philip Morris seems to be doing a bit better. The other thing that Philip Morris is better at is their financial health. Philip Morris International has a lot more current assets, sitting at $19 billion against their current liabilities of $20.8 billion. On the other side, Altria has only $4 billion in current assets, with $8 billion worth of current liabilities. Altria also has more debt than Philip Morris International, with $24.8 billion of long-term debt versus Philip Morris's $21.8 billion. Plus, Altria is paying more in interest payments, with $1.19 billion in interest payments in 2021 versus the $716 million that Philip Morris paid. So, overall, it is looking like Philip Morris is the better company, right? Sort of. There are three reasons why I still think that Altria is better. First of all, the dividend. Both Altria and Philip Morris have increased their dividends every year since they started. However, Altria has a much faster dividend growth rate. Over the last 5 years, the annual dividend growth rate was 7.7% for Altria versus only 3.6% for Philip Morris. Altria has a better payout ratio than Philip Morris at 76.6% versus 84.8%. So, Altria's dividend is a bit more sustainable and has more room to grow. Altria's dividend yield is also a massive 8.24% versus Philip Morris's 5%. So that's a big difference, especially given the expected growth rate. The second reason is the price. Altria has got into some controversy over its dual products over the last few years, and its price has taken a hit accordingly. Currently, its forward non-gap PE ratio stands at 9.5 versus Philip Morris's 18. So Altria is trading at almost half the price. We can see that the market has massively discounted Altria relatively to its main competitor, and I think the discount is way overblown, giving us a very good buy opportunity. Plus, even with the recent drop in price, Altria's total return over the last 10 years has been higher than Philip Morris's at 142% versus 85%. Recently, Philip Morris has been doing better, yes, but in the long term, Altria has a lot more going for it. The business has been improving and it feels like the market still hasn't picked up on it yet, meaning there is a very good opportunity there. The third reason is the incoming recessions and the effects of inflation. Yes, Philip Morris has better margins than Altria, but Altria has also shown a much better ability to improve its business, the operations and their margins over the last 10 years. Plus, 
Altria has only 6,000 employees versus Philip Morris's 69,600 employees. Altria has lesser operating expenses at only 1.8 billion versus Philip Morris's 8.4 billion. Plus, the tobacco industry is considered a consumer staple and tends to do well over times of recession, slow economic growth, and inflation. To finish off, I actually think both companies are worth looking into, and I am thinking of getting both, but my preference is towards Altria, and I will buy more of it. They are both good dividend growth stocks, and they are positioned well enough to match or even outperform the S&P in 2023. So, there we have it. Sonoco Products, Altria Group and Philip Morris International are three of my top dividend stocks to get right now, and the three stocks I am buying as soon as I get my salary. Which are your top dividend stocks for the year? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and share it with your friends. Thank you very much for watching and I will talk to you again soon.